Hey guys, uh, I'm going to show you a little bit about how to use the miter saw, also known as the chop saw to some people. Uh, let's go over a few things. Basically, this is a saw made for making angled cuts. Uh, I probably use this saw more than any of the other saws. Uh, and the saw, the angle I use is a 90 degree cut. Just really easy, simple, goes right down. Uh, but you can also make angled cuts, or what we call a bevel. A bevel is any cut that's just not 90 degrees. So like this is not a bevel, it's a 90 degree cut, but this is a beveled cut right here. And you can do that by pushing this button down. Where's the lock here? And you can push this, release that, and you can change it. If you come over here, you'll see that there are degrees here that you can cut on. And the most common degrees that you're going to use, you see 0, 22.5, 31.62. These are kind of like the builder's angles that they tend to use. 45 is also a really big common uh, angle right there. You just match it up just like you'd use a protractor. Okay. So uh, lock it in at 1. And they kind of have some like set, you'll hear it click at certain spots that are kind of usually, they may cut that. So uh, we're going to stop there at... Okay, lock that in. Uh, this can also cut sideways, so if I unlock this right here, come back over here. If I unlock this, oh, this is that one. Double check. Oh, we gotta do it on both sides. There we go. I can move this to a different angle, so like I can move this to a 22.5 degrees or 45 degrees cut. Now, sometimes when you do this, you're going to have to move your guards, because look right now, I would hit that metal plate. So I would have to, these have little adjustments here that you can take off, so you can make that angle cut like that, if that makes sense. So you might have to take this off, I'm going to put it back at zero, where I keep it 90% of the time. Every now and then, I'm making something that requires me not to do it, okay? And you can check the angle from both sides, okay? So, uh, this is a sliding compound miter saw. So see how it slides in and out? This allows you to make a way bigger cut than if you couldn't slide. Like it just comes straight down. Uh, all right, and generally when you're cutting the wood, you always wanna cut against the grains. The grain's going forward this way. So we're gonna cut this way, okay? Um, let's just show you how I would use this. Okay, I try to keep my hand about six inches away from the blade. Don't cut a small piece of metal on it. That's the most absolute most dangerous thing you could do. If you try to cut a little piece like this, there's a good chance you might lose a finger. Okay, so you always keep your fingers outside of these danger areas. This is marked, there's sometimes marked yellow, sometimes they're marked red. You keep your hands off of this. Okay, if you try to cut this little piece, you'd probably lose a finger. You want to stay at least six inches away. Okay. You line up for your wood, and let's say we mark, let's just go and go and do that. Let's say I took a measurement, I want to, I usually use a, um, I wouldn't use a ruler, I'd use a tape measure here. But let's say I want to cut six inches off this. So I measure here, I mark my spot at six inches, okay? So, and generally, I like to do that at more than one spot. I'm gonna come down here, mark six inches. Then take this, we'll just take this piece of wood right here, line it up with this, and I'm gonna draw my line across. Yeah, we'll draw it across like this. Come on over here. So you can see you see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just drawing that line across there. I generally like to mark both sides because uh, I would measure down here and mark, and then measure down here and mark, and then line up my two spots and then draw my line. Okay, but I can't do that because I can't measure this because it's already been cut. All right, so if I'm wanting to keep this side, it's really important you pay attention to which side of the blade. Okay, so look here. I want to keep the right side, so I'm putting my, my line, my blade to the left. Because that blade's actually going to cut about that much away off the wood. It's just going to turn into nothing. So it's really important which side you put the blade on of your, of your mark. Okay, you don't cut right on your mark. You cut, cut to one side of it or another. Okay. So I'm going to cut to this left side because I want to keep the right, so my blade's on this side. And I'm going to pull back, I'm going to pull back, I'm going to go all the way down, and then all the way back until it clicks. 
Alright, so here we go. Okay, just like that. And I got my nice 90 degree cut right there. Alright, and you see I kept my hand six inches away from the blade. Uh, we can do angle cuts. You have this guy right here, which I sometimes use. I'm Ooh. Almost there. Sometimes even if you don't want to keep your hand on the blade, you can clamp it, or if you've got a really long piece, you can clamp this down so that it's held holding in place. Okay. Uh, sometimes if you have a really long piece of wood, you might have to put some wood up here to kind of set it on. Uh, Another useful tip is like, say I need to make like 10 of these size pieces. One thing I'll do is like, I'll use a, what we call like a jig. I'll make something to help me make that piece. Um, I'll go in here, I'll measure out how far away I need to make it. And then I'll clamp this piece of wood down right here. I'm gonna clamp it right here, let's just say. I need a couple pieces that are all uh, I got the wrong clamp too. Is my mistake. Let's see. Let's take this guard off. This okay, my clamp right here. Come over here to this side. You need. Okay. So see, I'm gonna move this guard back. I'm gonna clamp right here. And let's just say that's my measurement. That's what I need. I need to make a bunch of these. Okay. So I just come here, do it. Got it. All the way down, all the way back. You see I got two identical pieces now. It's a really good way to make a lot of things. Like you're making a table and you have to make 10 pieces. I suggest instead of measuring every single one, get one cut, mark where it's gonna be on the thing, run them all, and then you're done. Okay? Uh, let's go under anything else. Uh, whenever you're using this, let's talk about you want to make sure the blade is, is sharp. The most dangerous thing, so most the thing that happens to most of my stu students, and they never get hurt, but this scares them, is they, they start this thing and then they don't cut all the way down. So they cut halfway through and they let go and it slows down. When this blade starts spinning slow, that's when it's most dangerous. It will catch that wood and throw it. And uh, so you want to always make sure you go all the way down, all the way back, Okay, and sometimes I just don't have to leave, it there, leave it holding right there until it stops and then bring it up. Okay? Never try to do like a half cut or anything like that. Uh, always all the way through. Um, make sure the blade is sharp. A dull blade is actually a lot more dangerous on a saw because it causes more friction. The blade, when it cuts through smooth, the saw goes down smooth. If not, it rubs, can catch, it can splinter. Um, don't use the machine if the guards aren't in place. Here's the guard. Uh, don't make any adjustments to the machine until a blade stops spinning. Um, see, keep your hand six inches away from the blade when you're using it. Um, make sure it attains max speed before you go. So, like, don't start. That's another common mistake students make. They, they turn on the blade right here with the, the blade touching it, and it'll throw the wood because it's not spinning up fast enough. You need to let the blade get to its top speed. It takes, like, two seconds. One, two, and then you just go. Okay. Uh, any small pieces, clamp them, use this thing, or you can use another clamp here to clamp it to the thing instead of your hand. Uh, only cut one piece of wood, don't stack them on there. Uh, I, let's see. Don't take anything away until you've moved the blade back to its original position up here. Uh, So remove any, any scraps out of the way before you make another cut. Uh, do not make a freehand cut. Uh, it must be like flat and against something, so don't try to like hold it right here and make a cut. That's a really good way to get hurt. Uh, always stay in the operator area, this is here. Uh, 
do not leave the saw until it comes to complete stop. stop. Some, this one turns off automatically when you let go, but uh, don't leave the area until the saw stops playing. Um, let's see what else. All right, I think that's like kind of the main thing. A uh, really great tool to use. Uh, I'm gonna make one angle cut here before we're done. So I'm gonna bring this over here to, I'm gonna make like a little door stop type thing. So I'm gonna come right here. Let's just go with like a 10 degree angle. Okay. So this is a good one when you're making a cut like this. Let's go actually a little more, let's go to 15. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and use this thing that I had out earlier. I'm gonna bring it down here. I'm gonna tighten it in place because it's a tiny small piece. Okay, I've got that on there secured. I've got my hand back six, six inches from the, what, the blade. And I'm gonna go at an angle. Actually, it looks like I need to go just a hair forward more. Right there's probably good. I'm gonna make a little mini door stop. All right, got that tightened down. Everything's lined up. Here we go. Cutting pieces like that, it can catch and fly like that. So you got to be careful when you're cutting small pieces off. So be prepared for that. But yeah, you can shim that under a door and you got like a little door stop. Okay. I hope this helps. Uh, you know, always ask me before you use this tool. Uh, there might be a, it might be broken. Uh, the blade might not be sharp. You never know. If someone's used a tool in between the last time you've used it, you should always ask them about if, was it working well. You never know when something's wrong and you could use a machine that could hurt you. Okay, like a tooth could be broken off. Like maybe there was a nail in the wood and like it hit the nail and this like little piece of metal on this tooth got one of these about to fall off and then when it starts spinning fast, it falls off and hits you in the face. Well, hopefully the guard stops it, but it maybe it doesn't. Also make sure wood doesn't have any nails in it when you're cutting, that could be really bad. <coughs> and uh, there's a lot more to it. You know, you can change out these blades. You can put on a metal cutting blade. I don't really do that. I've got different tools for cutting metal. Uh, you've got different fine tooth tools for cutting like different kinds of tea or different kinds of material um, but for the most part you're going to use this machine just for wood uh, maybe the occasional plastic rod or something but uh or don't i'm sorry don't cut rods with this a plastic cube or something in there all right uh, i hope that helps you and if you have any questions just let me know